Why did Team Biden discover the classified documents now? Well, I mean, obviously, they were closing up the pen offices when they discovered that there were a couple of documents there. They went, you know what, let's make sure that in the transition, we didn't take anything else anywhere else. So just go to the places we moved to and go through all that stuff with a lawyer with clearance. And if they find anything, make sure it goes back to NARA because we don't need this shit and it shouldn't be out anyways. And there you go. Um, but I'm sure it's because <clears throat> Kamala Harris either is trying to knock off Biden and take over his job and make sure he can't run next time or Gavin Newsom did it. Um, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, and I think that shows taste and breeding on your part. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And if the if I'm I may not even be talking to you at all. I may be talking just into my webcam because the show may or may not even be on. I don't know. I hope so. Second to second, moment to moment. I'm just trying to deliver a show, but it just might it might not be on. It might have stopped. Anytime I check, I'm like, okay, I'll check, but. Then as soon as I transition over the other page, but I'm trying. Anyways, love you guys. Thank you for being here. Like and subscribe. Thumbs up. Subscribing and pointing and poop and bits and shoots and things and dinks and boinks. There you go. All right, here we go. I have no idea. All right. Kevin McCarthy, he's uh, come out to the discovery of more classified documents. By the way, he's that's his uh, big dumb guy voice. He does that all the time. Um, so... Uh, uh, instant shade at McCarthy. Um, yeah, again, popcorn. In President Joe Biden's possession, oh, that highlights the hypocrisy within inside the federal government. Yeah, okay, it does do that. It does. Again, uh, is it just me or is Glenn sick again? Again, I've been nursing this cough for a little while, but it's, it's, I had a, I had the flu, the gunk, and this is it trailing off. That's how it works. Um, this is all new. Every time we see this dude, it's always the, like, there's got to be an intervention. I, I like, I, I don't know if we have to just like park big rigs in front of the Sonic near his house or what. Yeah, we, but is this, is, is this new? Did we, haven't we always said this? Well, oh, think of Donald Trump. I mean, I could, I could go back in time. Uh, think if Ronald Reagan would have done that. I don't know what you <laughs> I don't know what he means. I think he's always going back in time in his mind. Think of Eisenhower if he would have done that. Yes, that's 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 what <laughs> Glenn Beck's been broadcasting for so long. He's he, when Reagan was in office, he was going, "Think if Eisenhower had done something like Iran Contra. What if I, what if Eisenhower had made a deal with the Iranians?" Well, at that time we were allies. It was kind of okay. I mean, you can go all, think of Lincoln if he would have done. All right, now we're, now it's just filling time. Now, it, this is the same story. <laughs> yes, he's been he's been covering this so long. That, oh, oh, God. It's the same story. No, it is not the same story. It isn't. And for, and for the record, the, uh, during the Obama administration, <coughs> excuse me, there was, this was a big thing. It's a big regular thing. Where they're like, uh, Bush does all this stuff, gets us into the wars that we're in, by the way. And then Obama's catching the heat for it as if he started it. That kind of stuff. We got it. Now, why is this story happening? Well, let me give you, uh, they found more documents over the weekend. Now, remember, the White House said, we're absolutely done with documents. We they did not say that. On every day of no, they didn't. They definitely didn't say that. They didn't say we're absolutely done with documents. They were continuing to do a diligent search. At no point have they said, "What? Well, that's that's uh, that's all that could possibly exist and evermore." You know who did say that? Trump and his lawyers, um, when they handed over an envelope of classified documents and a wrapped red envelope, which is how you're supposed to transport them. Um, which basically says that Trump knew he hadn't declassified. That's a, a knowledge and awareness that he had not declassified these documents. And they continued to have some more. And then after, during the search and seizure was literally after they had told, they had lied through legal channels multiple times, signed off on things saying we don't have any more. And they were literally found with hundreds. They found more over the weekend at another house. And by the way, um, setting up a false 
lie on someone else's part or setting up a like a false promise. We see that a lot. You know, that's that's the way the far left tend to attack Biden. These guys do it with the like the false exculpatory statements like I've never done anything. He said he'd never done anything like this, that kind of stuff. You set up this kind of um, the a, a, a false purity test. You're basically setting them up for a false purity test that they have proclaimed their piousness or proclaimed their purity and when no one would with any brains. And then if they fall short, then you can say, but they had lied to you on the highest level. That's how many houses this guy is like Ronald McDonald. (laughs) Ronald McDonald's constantly building another Ronald McDonald house. (sighs) How many houses does that clown need? How many houses does the president need? He's got more houses. So no, he's got the same two houses. He's got this regular house and he's got the lake house. Same, same place. By the way, Donald Trump buried his ex-wife on the golf course at his at one of his five golf courses at, at Bedminster. They went to another house and they're like, whoops, okay, it's not exactly <laughs> over, but these documents really don't matter. Okay, all right. Um, well, they're classified documents, so I'm pretty sure that would matter. Now, did he just wake up and do the show? I mean, I've I've rolled out of bed and done shows, but that's the morning show. That's when I'm just messing around. They went to uh, Wilmington and... Uh, Where he has another house besides the Wilmington house. And, and when I say they, they went to Wilmington and uh, Rehoboth Beach. That's where his other house is. And when I say they, I mean the same people that went to, you know, his foundation with the university. So who are they? His attorneys. Now, this started back in, what was it, November or or October, where the president's attorneys went to his office to pack up stuff and, uh, and close that office. His attorneys. Now, that is the world's most expensive moving company. Yeah, this is the joke we saw on Gutfeld about it being, a, or on uh, Greg Kelly. That's who it was. Greg Kelly was like, it's $1,000 an hour, and that's who you have. Okay, they have to, uh, some of the documents that he has are not just like folding up folders of whoever you are or whoever I am. This is the former vice president and the current president of the United States. There are staff and legal representatives everywhere. Okay. Why would you have your attorneys do that? Because uh, some of the things were pro- uh, the property of the Penn Center because they're closing the office and they are like shutting it down, which is a legal endeavor in and of itself. And some of the things that might be in there are the property of the Penn Center and some of the things that are there are the property of the uh, the president. And so they were, they go through the checklist and it's a legal transfer of ownership uh, or a, like a rescinding of ownership back into it because it was a borrowed space for the Penn Center. That's that's why. That's a, that's what makes it different from say a private office, for example. And then the lawyers that went to that place and told it are different different than the lawyers who are now looking at his other properties who have clearance, who are current lawyers who have you know top secret secret clearance to see that stuff. They can. They're allowed. They passed all the background checks and done all that kind of stuff. So of his other ones, because they work with him in the, as the vice president. But at, at current time, these are a different batch of lawyers. Well, I could provide. But lawyers are lawyers are lawyers. It just like, oh, they don't have any more documents. Oh, oh, oh. That thing. Thesis. <clears throat> Let's say. You know, you have something you shouldn't have. And maybe you've done something you shouldn't have done. You go to your attorneys first, because to them, you don't have to say, I know this guy. What you say to them is, you guys can't talk, right? I mean, legally, everything I say to you, you can't repeat it, right? Right. Right. So the, the, this, the premise is, is that he's using, uh, this is a, that he's using them uh, as a Rudy Giuliani, essentially, only not stupid. Good. I got all these top secret documents. Okay. 
There's a bunch of, bunch of them over there. There might be a bunch of them. In, I mean, I think... If that was the case, he would have sent the current lawyers who did have top secret clearance. These are his other lawyers that were handling civil stuff. Might have some in Sandy Burger socks. I don't know. So can you guys go in there, and if you find them, just do what you have to do. I don't want to know about it. Do what you have to do. I don't want to know about it. Do what you have to do is contact NARA and make sure that they're returned, because that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but the idea is that there was a second thing where they had a conversation about, you know, again, this is where you spackle all the gaps in anything you don't know with conspiracy. Okay. The president has said last week, the attorneys told me, you know, to not even ask about it. Oh. Hmm. But did you guys talk about it before they said that to you? So the attorneys go in, they find it, and they immediately call and cooperate. You mm -hmm. know, that is big of Joe Biden. Now, that's why he had the attorneys there. Now, go to his house. But I have it with my Corvette. Ah, yeah, we're going to come back to that. Sa that is like the safest place on earth. You have an old Corvette? I'm telling you, you can't break into the, the garage door opener. <sighs> Nobody has one of those. Nobody has one of those. You can't just. All right, now he's, yeah, he's again, filling stuff. And, and by the way, can, can I remind you guys? Um, well, let's see. Give me, give me one second. If I may, can I share something with you? Um, this should be the easiest. Yeah. So, um, let me bring this one up. <sighs> Inventing Anna 2.0. Whoops, go ahead. Meet Anna de Rothschild, the fake billionaire heiress, real name Inna Yashishin who allegedly conned Donald Trump, bonded with Kimberly Guilfoyle, and is being probed by the FBI. Um, there she is. And she's, she's, that's, that's her at uh, the golf course near to Mar-a-Lago that I think Trump owns or uses. Yeah, that's the one he owns <clears throat> because Mar-a-Lago is not attached to one. But she was uh, at Mar-a-Lago multiple times. She parked her rented, um, what, 70,000 or 117,000, I forget what the number was, uh, dollar uh, rented SUV there that she would, and pretended to be a, a, a child of the Rothschilds. Now, can I, can I remind everyone that if you go across any QAnon thing, um, any thread of conspiracy anywhere, but particularly it's important that it's the QAnon stuff because it's Trump and those folks support him and think he's the Superman here to save us from the cabal of, you know, baby milkshake eaters, that they believe the Rothschilds were behind World War One, World War Two, that they, you know, they're part of the globalist Jewish conspiracy that runs everything. And yet, and by the way, and how in the world does that circle around him not kind of know that? Because they all openly talk about it, talk about the QAnon. Like, he pretends not to know, I suppose. But there's no way Rudy Giuliani hasn't gone through, you know, huge cigar and bourbon conversations about the Rothschilds, for fuck's sake. Certainly Don Jr. has. And here she shows up pretending, fake ID and all, to be Anna de Rothschild. Like, and and her name is Inna Yashishin, which is, sounds like a, a painful, proctological endeavor. But, <clears throat> so... This this woman was at Mar-a-Lago multiple times. Now, at this point, while there are no visitor, visitor logs for uh, Biden's home or the idea that, oh, my God, it got broken into or the idea that either one of them in the age of Biden post-presidency after Obama, that he wouldn't have an extraordinary security system at his house because of the psychotic Tea Party into MAGA cult, especially around the, you know, their attachment to Hunter and all that kind of stuff, that you wouldn't jack up security around your home like crazy. Because if we've ever heard a house where a, you know, a celebrity lived, where somebody broke in and was found with a shotgun while the family was away planning to take them out when they came home, 
it, the, the Bidens are on that list of of you wouldn't be surprised at all if that happened at, at at the lake house or at their regular house. None of us would. I know people personally who is who that has happened to. So it wouldn't shock me that one of these idiots would want to do it with the Bidens. Um, needless to say, anyways, but so all this stuff, uh, you know, the it's a totally unsafe house. I mean, but Mar-a-Lago is a fortress. This lady came in pretending to be a member of a uh, a, a, a globalist Jewish conspiracy cabal that eats babies and starts all the wars ever, according to Mel Gibson. And she was able to f- use that as cover to fake her way on, into Mar-a-Lago and get pictures with him and with Giuliani and with Lindsey Graham. And like, I, I, I mean, you could just file it under fucking please get in because the garage door opens <coughs> it's locked you need some sort of like i i don't i this is even beyond quantum computing to be able to get past one of those sears garage door openers so because he's old he has a sears garage door that's uh, we're gonna come back to that one so th- you'll, you'll have to i think at some point his other house this weekend after it's all out in the open his attorneys are there at the other house now, I don't know why they haven't done all of the places they could look, you know, at once, maybe in November. Hey, we found them in the basement. Do you have any in, you know, next to your Corvette? I'll tell you why. Because at each of those places, one of them was the, the, the place where they found the most recent stuff is in his, the library in his home, like the, the library. And one of the things that they found apparently was, um, like in a folder in a wall of folder documents and stuff that was like leather bound from his time as vice president. So, the, so they're, because if you're looking for this kind of stuff, you have to get clearance to do this kind of stuff. You're like, oh, okay, we might have some stuff. So uh, it'll take us about three or four weeks to set up the team that's going to go. And this is where you're going to go in. You can just you can look through everything. And then they have to do this. Nope, nothing here. There's another thing that I've... Crap. Did I go away and come back? Hold on. Did I drop off? Am I back? Am I here? Am I here? Am I gone? Has it happened? What happened? Okay, good. Yeah, the, uh, in the middle of the show, literally that like, I don't know, get out the fight in the youth, the hotel, <laughs> um, internet, that came back up. Okay, sorry. So here I am. <coughs> Where were we? All right. Let me back up. So this is this is Glenn um, trying to make a mountain out of a molehill, which is basically his job, and then turning uh, molehills, like uh, trying to uh, trying to make a mountain out of molehill. But then in the case of Trump, a lot of times trying to pretend mountains are molehills. That's it's it's it's, it's got to be exhausting. I mean, look at him; he looks exhausted. There is that big box that's just classified and has big red tape all over it. Yeah, they don't. It's not a big box of classified documents, a couple things in a bunch of other folders. And they're like, yeah, this this qualifies. But again, they were never notified by NARA that anything was missing. Yeah, we should probably go there. Do you have any other houses <clears throat> that do it? I don't know why. Thank you, TOHO Live. Bless you. I don't know why, but they're fully cooperating. Okay. Yeah, by the way, very quickly from the primary discovery, just from shutting down the old office. Now... <clears throat> Here it comes. This is the thought. Here we go. This is, it took us five minutes. This is the wind up. But you can look at his face and this is a man trying to figure out what he was going to talk about in the middle of this thing. And he knew something would come to him. Remember that scene in, uh, in uh, Only Murders in the Building? I think it was season two where Steve Martin comes up like, but luckily we have a plan. And they're like, what? He goes, honestly, 
I thought a plan would come to me as I was saying that. And, but it didn't. And he went, or did it? And they're like, eh. He's like, nope, still nothing. It, that's, ex that's where we are. That's what this is. That's what we're watching. Let's, let's ask two questions here. Okay, here we go. Two questions. That's two questions. When something says top secret, to get a top secret classification, what do they do before you get that little card? Stu. They use who gets what little card? You it getting turning top secret or are you getting clearance? Do a background check? Background check. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. What are they looking for? But maybe criminal activity. Criminal activity. Some yeah, way sure. you could be compromised. Compromise, sure. Or, you know, I just toured the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. You know? They're looking for anything. I just they're looking to see if you just toured the Soviet. So anybody, according to Glenn, anybody who, quote, just toured the Soviet Union, uh, that might be enough to deny you um, top secret clearance. Unless you're, of course, one of the seven Republicans who went to uh, Moscow for the 4th of July and had meetings with Vladimir Putin with no note taker present. Those are obviously for America. And that you've done that <clears throat> shows that you are on... Uh, let's say not America's side, or you have any friends that might be, let's say, not on American side, or you have any business dealings with some people that, let's just say, are not on America's side. And then you also look, final thing is, um, is he compromised with money? With oh, by the way, I think the case he's trying to make is that... Um, uh, first of all, I don't know why he's winding up to make a case about why Donald Trump shouldn't have gotten top secret clearance. And again, it's, it had nothing to do with whether he was qualified to get top secret clearance. He got voted in because um, this this could be a description of why it was insane that Trump ever had access to top secret documents. But what he's trying to do is make this about the fact that, you know, like Hunter Biden and China and all that kind of shit. And that's why uh, Biden should have never gotten top secret clearance or whatever. But again, he was voted in as vice president. It doesn't fucking matter. The people have chosen this guy and ta-da and all of the stuff that they allege is bullshit anyways. But had it been known to people and just like in a lot of ways i think honestly speaking trump's loan stuff was known by a, a a large number of people leading up to 2016 and they a lot of them looked past it they decided this man that the country voted and gave trump um i mean obviously three million short of the popular vote but from the electoral college standpoint he became president and that gave him the right to look at top secret clearance material without ever having the the stand we would have never met the standards as a civilian employee or a contractor or a, a or someone being hired to work in the federal government as a bureaucrat um in any of these cases they would have he would have ne he would have failed it and the idea is that glenn's trying to put the point forward is that hunter would have been enough to make uh biden unable to get that clearance i'm guessing uh, is, is there a sex scandal? Is he is he prone to a honeypot thing? Okay. All right. Oh, you mean like a pee-pee tape or... That's what they're looking for because you can so easily need money and then somebody can come out and go, listen, I'm Boris, but I'm... Right. Okay. By the way, again, this Glenn's just filling time doing voices, but... This is all about Trump in its own way. Biden's never had debt problems in his life. Even the fucking lake house was an optional buy. There was never a point where his one house was leveraged. He sold a bunch of books. They bought a second house. Absolutely love America. And I just want to see the... I want to see top secret document because I want to show you how American I am. I'll never say anything to Soviet Union. It's, it, this is amazing. I honestly, I think he's got a shot at Gutfeld. Okay, all right. That guy could approach you and go, so you need a little money, maybe. Little heroin. Okay, I can help. A little money, a little heroin. That's how it works. 
This is amazing. I, you know, this is where I turn for the kind of inside baseball of how corruption in, in DC works. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the fine tuned elements. We can all talk in broad strokes, but it's, it's amazing that, you know, this guy with this lifetime in broadcasting. And, you know, he's, he's accumulated so much knowledge about how everything functions that he can, you know, push past all the the kind of, the, you know, hack slathering that you'll see and really, uh, like, needle right to the point. But I want to see top secret document. <laughs> what the fuck was that for? <laughs> and that's how it happens. Probably did. That's what they're worried about. Okay. No, they're not worried about it. I don't know where you like, this is, okay, that, that was point one, by the way. And, and I thought for a second when he said it's two things, I, th I thought I, on a, uh, this is my fault. I apologize. I, for a split second, thought I was wrong that he actually had written down two things that he was going to address probably in the pre-show and just how, how he was like sloppily getting there. And then he eventually, you know, and it turns out he actually got it through. No, uh, he's still making it up. That was just, he just pulled that one out of his ass and was like, I'll, I mean, he's generally making the compromise idea, but I, I, I think he's thinking of the second one now. I, that's what I think. I, I, my money's on, he's thinking up what the second thing is now. Bless you. Love you. Love you. I prefer saying I love you to my girl when she sneezes over bless you because A, she's a blessing and B, never pass up an opportunity to tell your girl she, you love her. Now, wait a minute. This is in the president or vice president's house. At the time, he was the vice president, and he had them there while he was vice president. Yes, and because of an executive order, uh, executive order signed by Barack Obama, he had the right to classify and declassify documents himself as vice president. He was able to do that. It was part of their partnership of him being the last guy in the room, that they had equal access to everything and equal powers over that in particular so that they could speak frankly to each other and they didn't have to go through a secondary channel or, the, or there was no feeling that the president was seeing stuff that the vice president didn't know and that they were linked together. That was part of the agreement of him being vice president when they started. And then... And Glenn's stupid. He kept them there while he was president... Okay, so they've been in there for a while. Who else has been in his house? <gasps> oh my gosh. A guy who is constantly asking for money for drugs and hookers. A guy who is doing shady business deals with China and with Russia and uh, Ukraine. Wait a minute. That's exactly the kind of guy we don't want to have access to top secret documents. Yeah, but he was almost never there. Well, let's go back to that ultra secure garage. Yeah, the, the, that's why they put that box in the garage. The one, by the way, that they show in all that stuff that's covered in shit. And, the, and I mean, we're talking about like visitor logs and memos and stuff that are technically cl classified but don't contain any it, like any classified doc you know like uh st the stuff about supposedly uk and ukraine that was in there um in the first batch were at the pen office which hunter did not have access to alleged you know it would make sense and and i won't write off that he possibly had been there let's just float that but again spackling any hole in your ignorance with conspiracy but there you go um nothing has been said about the the documents that were found in the garage and what they entail eventually it will come out a description will come out but but again because of this the sort of trickle of the information and you can make whatever you know glenn will fill in whatever gaps he finds with um with the, the russians have a stranglehold on Hunter, and so do the Chinese, which is why we're being so nice to Russia and so nice to China right now. Um, but the idea is that, you know, he's it, Hunter was desperate. It, it's hard to get him cleaned up at this point. That's the house that Hunter Biden was renting from his dad. Not now with his art money. He was renting it from his dad when he had no money. Remember? I got no money. 
I, that's why she's pregnant. I couldn't afford a condom. Oh. Ew. Oh, poor guy. So his dad said, just stay at my house. I'm not living there. You just stay at my house. And by the way, that's not the same garage. Oh, my gosh. What a great dad. And he wanted to make sure his son grew up a little bit. And you're going to have to work for it a little bit. You know, this house, the, the most expensive rent in this area is $6,000 a month. So I'm going to cut you a deal because you're my son. You just pay $50,000 a month. Oh, um, that's, that's the story about uh, he on the gun application. He was saying his address and then how much he pays for rent. He rents the house, but he also rents offices. He had another house he was renting. Total, he was paying $50,000 in rent around. That seems to be where that number comes from. I remember, I couldn't afford the condom. Uh... Right. Well, this is a condominium. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> We're, we're, look, the only time that joke has ever worked was in Rocky. The only time. Oh, I don't really use them. Right, remember? Ugh. More letters gotta be a little more expensive. <laughs> what the fuck? $50,000 to his desperate son now where does his desperate i don't have any money son get that money oh well, don't worry he's got a job with like burisma he's doing deals over in china completely his deal no big deal no big deal also um the the like slathering sarcasm movements or whatever. Um, I mean, it's obviously he's trying to telegraph a lot. But again, none of these assholes have been able to explain to me or you or anybody why if China was paying either Hunter to get leverage on Biden or or Hunter to get uh, to get leverage on Biden through Hunter because Biden agreed to it. Why we are acting as a country and why the Biden administration has been harder on China than the, even the Trump administration was. And the same thing with Russia. If any of the financial stuff they say about Biden and Hunter are true about China giving them money and Russia giving them money via Ukraine, then the Biden's then I don't know how else to put this, but Biden fucked both those countries. And they paid him for the, the service. That he, it was, if there's any story here, the headline is Biden conned China. Or Biden conned Russia. Or <laughs> Biden conned Russia and China. Because that's what this amounts to. Because if they bought influence and favors... They have gotten none of it. As a matter of fact, it's been in, it's been in increasingly worse as it goes on. Joe Biden doesn't know a thing about it. Nothing. He's not getting any money from it. He's just trying to help out his poor wayward son, giving him access to his house so he has a place to rest his angelic head while dad charges him. $50,000 a month. And what's in that house? <gasps> the boxes of top secret documents right there next to the garage. So you don't need McGuff. Wait a minute. They, they're now next to the garage? Are they outside? Well, then why does it even have to be Hunter? If they're just next to the garage... Did, I heard it on Glenn Beck's program that they were even in the garage. They were next to the garage. You could just roll anybody... Anybody can drive up the driveway. They're just laying there. You can tell. And he even said they're a big red box with a that says top secret on them. And they were just right next to the garage. Because that's how the life, that's how world, the world works. You don't need some genius to go, how do we break in past that Sears robotic arm? 
How do we do it? Because you already have a drug addict inside who's right in his family going, yeah, at least dad doesn't take half your money. Remember, he's really bitter and angry with his dad. At I think that was well before this. And after he got cleaned up, that wasn't the feeling. So, well, never mind. I mean, at it's time. Awesome. Right. He wants his dad to suffer. Mm. Yes, he wants his father to suffer. So he'll uh, give away, I don't know, military secrets to Russians and the Chinese that might get American service people killed like his brother. Think about that for a second. Think for whatever anger there might have been father to son, Hunter definitely loved Bo. Bo's dead. But the idea is like, oh, to get back at my dad, I'll give away secrets about the United States military or our economic future just to, to shiv my dad for overcharging me for rent that might in, you know end in people like Bo getting killed, service people. Because again, they it, hunt, when it comes to Hunter, occasionally they will say, well, I don't want to go after him. He's an addict and it's sad and it's sad and whatever. This is not that. This is Glenn Beck basically making the case that um, because of interparental relationships between an adult male and his father, that the, that man would endanger the lives of America, would basically risk a 9-11 essentially, to get back at his dad. <clears throat> the same dad, by the way, the only recording we have of that time that was uh, hacked from his phone and placed on that hard drive with the name laptop is him going, get some help, I love you, son. We'll do anything we can, I love you. That recording, which is by all measures real, that's the real relationship between them. He kept that message, by the way. Because again, if you believe, if you have to understand the mythology of the laptop is the idea that this laptop, my voicemails aren't stored on things like that, but you can save stuff, I suppose, or recordings of stuff if you saved it yourself. And in a moment of sadness, joy, annoyance, or what have you, that's the one he kept. He kept that message from his dad saying, I love you and I, I, I hope you get better and we're pulling for you. He kept that. Meanwhile, Glenn's just shit-talking both of them. So what Boris has to do, hey, I hear you're unhappy about that, huh? Hey, are those little top-secret documents? You know what would be fun? I give you more money. We say, uh, you work in gas industry. <clears throat> so why is this all coming out now? Um, because you have nothing else to talk about. Why? So the idea is that why is... Why is this story? Why are the documents? Why did they find them? This is the title of this video, so we're finally getting to it 10 minutes into this fucking thing. Why did, why did the attorneys go in to look for all of these documents? Because they'd gone to the, the Penn Center office and were shutting it down, and some of that requires the legal control of personal documents, medical documents, and that kind of stuff, so they have power of attorney to deal with those things so that... The president can't be there signing off on stuff like you would do if you were shutting down one of those kind of offices. And they found those things. And then after reporting back to him that they found something like that, he went, let's do a diligent search and make sure that during the transition, nothing else got in the wind. And they've been looking for stuff ever since. And they're going through everything because they give a shit. Are they turning them in? Um, well, obviously, because they've already been sold. And it's good news. It's obviously stuff because you can see how, like, the the Chinese economy is thriving against the United States. And they, we, he obviously had the uh, the cure for COVID because they were planning it back during the Obama administration. And so the Chinese got it. And that's why their vaccine works so well. Right? That we have a special counsel? Of course it is. It's a very good thing. I'll tell you right now, you say the justice. Oh, God, man. The, I, the boy. All right. Look, I know I do characters on this show sometimes, but they're better than that, aren't they? Help me out. I'm, 
Be honest. <laughs> department is corrupt. I've appointed a special counsel on it. Oh, good. Let what does Stu do while Glenn is doing this bullshit? Tie this all up in a nice little bow for you in 60 seconds. Uh oh, fuck off. Okay, so let's tie this up in a bow. Yeah, so please. Please. I swear to God, if he spent at least a minute during that commercial break and gathered his thoughts. Look at him. Look at his notes. It's, it's like watching. It's like Don Jr. in 25 years. You have a lawyer. He's not gonna be. <laughs> no. Special counsel, the House, Hunter Biden, an innocent, innocent, looking like a little puppy dog with big sad eyes, Joe Biden. Oh. What? Here's what's going on. Okay, finally. All right, here we go. You guys get yellow legal pads out. Everybody got something to write on. I'll just, I've got a, I got an Apple pencil. I'll just, I'm going to write it in the air and it'll fill in magically. It'll just. Um, <laughs> we're off to a good start. Back in November, I remember reading a little story. Whoa. As Tom Brokaw used to say, a whoa story about how Joe Biden's White House was now preparing for the onslaught of the Republicans who were going to possibly win Congress and they needed to have all these attorneys ready to go. So they were already working up things. Okay, sidebar, put that off to the side for a second. Uh, why would you have your attorneys do this when you know you're going to look like a hypocrite because you don't care what it looks like the classified documents need to be with nara and once those were found by shutting down that office that would you don't you don't care about how those people talk you have to do what's ethical and and of the highest integrity of what you're doing even if it comes with a public outcry also the timing of it is such that you do it during uh when the messaging when it finally did leak out uh it was during a window when nobody gives a shit about politics well you might want to do that with your attorneys so you could tell the attorneys everything that you know what's going on and they can't say anything and they he already said that part could clean up this mess and make it old news by the time it's used in a case against Hunter Biden. We know this. They already brought those out and they were cooperating every step of the way. We already know that Hunter Biden was paying his father $50,000 a month. In no, we don't know that. He, we know that he wrote that he pays $50,000 in rent. And he rented a house where all those documents were. No, they weren't. But it was crazy. His dad was, you know, vice president. He has a wayward son. He was just trying to help him out. All right. Yes. Yeah, get to the whole why it works. Because this, again, um, effectively, this is either a dead, dead agenting theory, which is um, the, the dead agent theory is that um, instead of the the... The Kremlin used this a lot. The U.S. Uh, uh, in, court, in theory used it, um, or I don't know if they ever acted on it, but the, it exists. The idea that um, and in World War II, this became a thing where <clears throat> if uh, an, a, a spy or an agent is captured and they have enough information, things that they could spill to the other side, you send someone out not to rescue them, but to kill them. Um, so one of your own is sent to murder you so that you because they will eventually get it out of you they will torture you to death and then they will kill you so they kill your own side kills you before you get a chance so you that's been turned into kind of a a turn of phrase in some quarters around this kind of information which is if it's a um a, if it's a story um crisis control pr firms do this a lot where they just go you just like the end of eight mile you just yeah, I'm terrible and everything's terrible and it's terrible and terrible and next. And Trump, by the way, used that for a good long while. That's how he would get past a lot of things. Matter of fact, he would often 
like a Pez dispenser of shock scandals, throw another one in so that the last one almost gets forgotten. It's like a gish gallop of bigotry, hate, and sexism. That's why we appointed a special counsel. Oh, no, wait a minute. What was it I just heard from the worst spokesman at the White House ever on this question? Play it again, Sam. Okay. Does this episode undercut that argument that, that he would restore confidence because here we have in the headlines that he is now under investigation. He's right restored right. independence in the Department of Justice. That's what we're doing here. When we're saying hey. we're going to refer you to the Department of Justice, that is restoring independence as it, oh, as it relates to stop issues like this. for a second. That, he can't let her even finish the thought. That's one of the reasons why uh, he thinks Corrine Jean-Pierre is terrible at her job is because his own thoughts enter in between every word or every sentence that she says, and he's an idiot. The only reason why a special counsel was appointed. No. The question right before, in the clip he just played, um, she was asked a question about this case and about the appointment of special counsel, and she said, I'm referring, in anything regarding the special counsel, I'm referring your question to the DOJ, they will answer questions because we're not, uh, we're cooperating fully, but we're not going to uh, interject in this. Like Trump did with Barr and, and bitched about Durham and all that kind of stuff. That's what you're supposed to do. Was but he, by the way, he cut that off to make it look like she's not talking about um, the case itself at all. Like she just went straight to that without the... I refer you to the DOJ. Restore America's <laughs> confidence in uh, the system. And it has nothing to do with now Joe Biden, his attorneys, his spokespeople saying, I cannot comment on this anymore. I no, they didn't say they couldn't comment on this anymore. They were referring to the special counsel part. Refer you to the Department of Justice. Well, normally when they would say that, imagine if it was Abraham Lincoln and they did this. Oh, no, fuck me. It would be leaks. Abraham Lincoln, he, he's under investigation, but here's the stuff our inside sources tell us. This time, there won't be those leaks. So you've... <laughs> what? So the idea is that they refer to the DOJ and then they... Uh, leak stuff out that's their point of view on it to try and shape the story outside it. But he's saying that if Kareem Jean-Pierre says, I'm referring you to the Justice Department and they will handle this, that the lack of leaks attempting to, from an internal source, protect Biden from whatever the DOJ comes up with is a bad thing. It's, it, it, that's amazing. That's That's... Um, that's astonishingly dumb. Actively now shut down the story. No. <laughs> Why? Because they refuse to leak? But they got somebody super special on the case. Yeah. Inspector Gadget. We needed Inspector Gadget because he's the only guy to figure out whether you could... Fuck. This, can I remind you again? This is about a story where the former president fought a subpoena and kept documents he didn't have the right to, lied about declassifying them magically with a brainwave from his own head, had Cash Patel running interference for him. And then um, uh, like a little less than a year later, the Biden administration, um, er, Biden in particular, his lawyers are cleaning out an office, find some classified documents, return to NARA, and then do a diligent sweep about these things. But the idea is that there were classified documents in that space. And in contrast to how Trump handled it, that's another story. But the existence of both of them, and, and there's a great opportunity for whataboutism and bullshitting through this. And, and it's and a serious story about classified documents. And this is this is what they're coming up with. Gutfeld's entire panel take on this was Kamala Harris is behind the whole thing, and it's not even Biden's fault. Glenn Beck's entire uh, take on this whole fucking thing is that Hunter lived there paying this magical $50,000 rent, <clears throat> and that he had that kind of money, but he needed money from his dad, 
or he was he was broke to pay the fifty thousand dollars. His dad got him in a situation where he had to take money from the Russians, who we are fucking right now, and give it to Biden so he could do it worse later. I think like, this is, and then I guess just drag it out with the same dumb McCarthy voice he started at the beginning. A Corvette and a Sears car door opener. And he says the the Sears car door thing is, it's got to be because Biden's old and the car's old and the garage has got to be old by comparison and this is just a theme. Get into the place. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what- Jesus Christ. Like the, the, ugh. Going on, this is all just pre- trial maneuvering pre-investigative uh, uh maneuvering yes unlike uh, trump who um gets caught with his pants down and does a lot of maneuvering trying to get them back up I, I again by the white house to make this we've heard this before this is old news and and that's the key right there same thing we heard with greg kelly this story is going to die same thing. They, they are already frustrated because they know it's not going anywhere. It's they're like, and they're going to try and keep it alive. Like you watch, like Jim Jordan and Gates are going to run with it and, and different angles, and they'll they'll put together their own little church committee about this in particular. But it's just going to, it's and every time it's brought up, it's going to the the you can't bring it up without sidecarring what Trump did and how Trump acted right next to it. And that's where they're stuck. So they want to milk this while it makes Biden look bad. But the real investigation about it looks like shit for them. This is what all the wagging is about. This is what all this like flailing is about. And, and to some degree, like regular reporters are just doing their kind of regularly do how is this different than what happened with trump and what is the difference and what has been going on and and doesn't it look bad and blah 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 like polling number shit which they're gonna ask anyways because that's part of the story as opposed to the facts of the matter um that this to me um is is the signal remember when, when i talked to you about like dying talking points Th these guys can it, it's like they've had a, they've had so many pets they they know when they get a new one that it's going to die one day. Like they're just that's all they can see in the pet. That's all they can see. That's it, pets are a terrible analogy, and I miss my cats. That's probably what I'm thinking about it. But <laughs> we're like I miss the kittens right now. I'm going to be completely honest. Um, although it's nice not to have, wake up with <laughs> while I'm trying. But and all of these things cleared up. So they can say, I'm not talking about old news. I'm talking about what's happening today. This president needs to concentrate on what's going on for the American people. Right. See, because they they know that by the spring, the infrastructure projects that are coming online and and then life because tornadoes and hurricanes and shit happens and Russia and blah, blah, blah. There's always going to be something like in the real world that they're ice skating uphill against in all this. That is exactly what's happening. And if you'd like more evidence of it, join me on Wednesday. Because Wednesday, <laughs> on my Wednesday night special on Blaze TV, I line all of this out. You line all of this out. Or you could line it up. It's pretty clear when you look at it. Mm, no. No, it isn't. But tell you what, I'll, I'll tape it. What do you think? I'll, 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 I'll watch it. Later, if he puts up clips of it, we'll go into it. I'm not doing a whole hour fucking special. But if he puts up a slice of this where he explains anything that he just said to any of us, uh, I'm in. Uh, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, and I appreciate it. Hi, how you doing?